Happy Friday, Moore Public Schools. This is David Burton, and I'm back to give you an update on week two of our district's PD at the Capitol. I know that our presence at the Capitol is having a positive effect when I see the impact of the relationships we are building with many of our representatives and senators. I have witnessed a representative hug a couple of our teachers two weeks after he shared not only a conversation with them about his work over the years to help protect and improve the teacher retirement system, but also sharing with them several boxes of pizza for lunch one day during the walkout. Many of the office assistants call our teachers by name and give them special greetings as they return to their offices. We have even had a couple of representatives leave the main floor of the chamber and come up into the gallery where we are watching and they visit with us. These are all evidence of the productive partnering that occurs when one, we continue our presence at the Capitol as a reminder that the work of fully funding public education is not yet complete, and two, that even in times when we may personally disagree on policy matters, mutual respect goes a long way to help build meaningful bridges. One of the bills that has caught our attention this week was Senate Bill 980, which creates a new LEAD teaching certificate and a new master teaching certificate. Each certificate requires that teachers earn certain scores within their yearly performance evaluations and have taught for a minimum number of years. The goal is to enable a local school district to provide additional leadership opportunities for some of its more accomplished teachers during the school day so that they can provide targeted assistance and professional development to help some of their colleagues improve their instruction, especially those teachers who are newer to the profession, whether through traditional, alternative, or emergency certification pathways. This idea appears to have been inspired by the teacher leadership and compensation system which the state of Iowa began implementing a few years ago. In the conversations we have had with lawmakers this week, our teachers have asked questions to help clarify details surrounding this idea, especially regarding the funding sources to help pay the stipends associated with these new levels of certification. As of late Wednesday evening, Senate Bill 980 has passed the full Senate and then passed the full House with an additional amendment. I am sure that there are more questions to come even as this bill returns to the Senate for reconsideration with this new amendment. On Wednesday morning, we had the opportunity to meet as a large group with Senator Paul Racino, Senator Rob Standridge, and Representative Chris Kennedy, each of whom serve a district that includes at least a portion of more public schools. The meeting was slightly late in getting started because the Senate had just finished its lengthy debate and vote on the statewide budget proposal for fiscal year 2019. This $7.6 billion budget includes the $2.9 billion for education that was previously passed as part of House Bill 3705. Because there have been numerous rumors surrounding the likely impact of the petition drive being led by former Senator Coburn. Our teachers did ask these lawmakers their perspectives on the matter. None of the three indicated any support of Coburn's efforts in the petition drive. Senator Standridge did mention that if the petition does receive the required number of signatures, then a delay might happen in implementing the benefits associated with the recently raised revenue. Again, this is something that is important and our district will continue to seek out additional details and legal insight. On Thursday afternoon, our delegation of teachers met with Representative Colin Walke. While Representative Walke does not represent a region within more public schools, he does have family connections with our district in that his wife and her sisters graduated from Moore High School, and his mother-in-law is a former member of the Moore Public Schools Board of Education. The previous evening, the House passed Senate Bill 888. When the Senate passed this bill in early March, it dealt with ethanol subsidies. The House, however, using one of its legal parliamentary practices, amended the bill by removing everything from the Senate version and inserting language to eliminate the refundability of tax credits for wind-related energy generation. Supporters of Senate Bill 888, as it is now amended, believe that this measure will save the state $70 million per year. This savings would be added to the general fund and could be used for additional education funding. Those against this bill, such as Representative Walkie, fear a lawsuit against the state because of economic development agreements made with the wind industry under Governor Frank Keating. Because Senate Bill 888 was amended by the House, it now must return to the Senate. We will have to wait and see what the Senate does with this bill in its current form. One education-related bill 
that the House heard yesterday brought a few moments of humor and bipartisan levity to the House. Senate Bill 950 modifies existing laws and practices surrounding the student use of medication while at school to allow students to bring and use sunscreen. The bill lets students self-apply the sunscreen as well as allowing school nurses or other designated school officials to help students apply sunscreen if parents have provided written permission. While fully recognizing the potential harmful effects of sun exposure for those students involved in outdoor activities, the House members still cracked a couple of jokes during debate simply based on the fact that they were discussing sunscreen. The bill passed the House unanimously and having already been passed in the Senate is now heading to Governor Fallon's desk. Before I close, I want to let each and every Moore District employee know that our curriculum department is preparing to hold a voter registration drive at each of our 35 campuses. As the contact person in this endeavor, I'm working with each school to schedule an opportunity in which one or more of our curriculum coordinators will be on your campus so that any teacher or staff member who is not currently registered to vote or who needs to update their voter registration due to an address change will have the opportunity to become registered. While visiting our three high schools, a similar opportunity to register to vote will be provided to all of our students who are or will turn 18 years old by the June 26th primary elections. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Our delegations will return to the Capitol on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. Due to efforts of the legislature to conclude this year's session by May 4th, next week will most likely be our last week at the Capitol for this legislative season. If you are interested in serving as a delegate from your school, please let your local principal know. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.